Okay, so now we're going to go over using the failover feature in conjunction with uh, limiting the range options. Um, the failover feature is found on the setup tab of the Wi-Fi Ranger control panel. You can see it here in system preferences. Uh, by default it's turned off, um, but lots of people would benefit from failover. It uh, basically causes the Wi-Fi Ranger to automatically attempt to get back online if it ever goes offline um, within the interval that you set here. So every five minutes the Wi-Fi Ranger will check for internet. If it's offline it will attempt to get back online uh, using the order of internet connectors seen up here. So with failover turned on you'll also want to be aware of your internet connectors and select um, or move one or the other higher in priority. So in this case, um, let's just say I had a WFR control. If I had an outdoor Wi-Fi Ranger Elite or Sky, I would probably move that to the top. That way my outdoor long-range Wi-Fi wi Ranger is prioritized. Next, maybe cellular, so the USB port on my go to router, then the internal receiver on my go to, and then Ethernet WAN. So that might be a pretty common uh, failover order, and it depends on what you want to do. So it helps to understand what each of these is, and reading the description will help with that. So with failover on and my order set up the way I want it, next I need to go to Wi Fi. Um, on the Wi Fi tab, you have range options. Now here is where you basically limit or minimize the amount of networks the Wi-Fi Ranger will automatically try to connect to in an auto connect either on first booting up or in failover if you know it went offline and it's trying to get back online. So what this does is it helps um, it helps the Wi-Fi Ranger to take less time to reestablish a Wi-Fi connection for internet. So, you know, let's say you've got a Wi-Fi Ranger Elite set up and it's pulling in 50 networks. I've seen 60, 70 networks sometimes um, just because they're so powerful. Um, the issue is it might take a long time to sort through them all. So by limiting the amount of networks attempted, maybe even the signal strength or the wireless standard, and only is the newer one, G or better, is kind of allowing some older networks. Typically, I would just change the attempted networks to 5 or 10, and possibly uh, change restrict networks to only tagged networks. And what that does um, is it causes the Wi Fi Ranger to attempt wirelessly connecting only to networks that you have preferred. So we're going to save those those uh, changes there. And um, to prefer a network, you create a Wi-Fi tag. There's another video on how to use tags. Um, and I just reset the Wi-Fi radio, so I'm going to have to wait for the Wi-Fi Ranger to start broadcasting again. And there we go. It's now broadcasting so we can get back on the control panel. Um, so on the uh, main tab, you can create a tag by clicking the checkbox and then select prefer for the type. You can either ignore networks to skip over them or try them last if it's like a, a MiFi or hotspot phone that you want to conserve the data plan on. And then you would select your uh, type of internet connector. Internal Wi-Fi WAN is the internal receiver of the Wi-Fi Ranger Go 2. All Wi-Fi connectors would apply to WFR control, which is the outdoor unit. So we're just going to use that one there. Select that prefer tag. And then on the Wi-Fi tab, you will see the tag here. You'll see the prefer tag. Um, if you had multiple Wi-Fi tags for different networks nearby you, you can even prioritize them. They have an order here. You can move them up or down in priority. So 
that's kind of how you would really limit the amount of networks the Wi-Fi Ranger tries during a failover, auto connect, or uh, auto connect on boot up. Um, the only important thing to note if you do have it selected on only tagged networks is you need to remember when you get to a new RV park or something you need to first thing select and tag a few networks as prefer otherwise it's not gonna you know it's not gonna use any of those networks um, so that's the only caveat to using this restriction if you left it with no restrictions and five networks that's kind of a safe option you know for it to basically always try to get back online but still not go through a list of 50 networks limit that to five networks um, one of the advantages to having failover turned on and limiting the amount of networks tried um, let's say all I have is a go to um, well when the GoTo is trying to connect to a network, um, it will not broadcast. So in other words, if I were to click connect right now for about five to ten seconds, um, I, my computer will lose its connection to the Wi-Fi Ranger. That's just because the Wi-Fi Ranger is doing a lot of things to establish that connection during which it can't simultaneously broadcast. So let's say the Wi-Fi Ranger has 28 networks in range and you don't have range options set up it's going to try all of these different networks and disconnect your computer 10 to 15 seconds for each network it tries that's why it's helpful to limit the amount of networks the Wi-Fi Ranger attempts um, you know it, it's not as likely to get online because it's, it could just try five networks and then not get online from any of those but it will at least allow you um, the ability to connect to the Wi-Fi Ranger, bring up the control panel, and see what's going on. That way your computer is not constantly being knocked off. So that's why it's helpful to um, kind of limit um, the number of networks and uh, the type of networks um, with range options if you've got failover on.